Okay, I'm live. I never do live uh, streams here on YouTube, but I have to say this is a big thank you to 5,000 subscribers. And in celebrating 5,000 subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway of all sorts of things. We've got microphone kits, we've got lenses, we've got ND filters from Sandmark, we've got Oh my gosh, what else have we got? We've got an RGB light, which I think I've already said, but lots of things, lots of gifts to give back from products that I've been given to review. And uh, I'm just excited to have a chance to uh, to share them with you. And also to answer any questions that you have on video, on filmmaking, on uh, anything camera related, camera system related, and uh, anything to do with particular camera systems. Just fire away in the chat if you have any questions. And these are all for you. So there's no strings attached. Just like and subscribe, obviously, on the channel. But all these gifts that I'll give away in a draw soon are right for you guys. So I'm just going to wait a little bit to see who comes in. We've got right now uh, two people on board. I'm flying off the hook with the uh, subscribers checking it out. But we're slowly growing now. Uh, we see Scott Conway here in the chat. So welcome, Scott. And uh, yeah. Live streams are not really my jam. Uh, I mostly like to do the, the taped style of video and control the edit and post. But it is fun to do these sort of uh, live stream giveaways. Back in the day when Janik and I used to do them, we uh, would give away subscribers or give away giveaways for subscribers at different levels of that subscription hit. So if it was, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 subscribers, we often gave away either a drone or a gimbal or all sorts of things that uh, to say thank you to you guys. And this has been a crazy year, obviously a crazy time for everybody. And as such, I've had a lot of products come in specifically for giveaways uh, to you guys. So I'm thrilled that I have a chance to, uh, to give them back to the community. So talk to me, who's out there? What, what's on your mind? What's new with, uh, with all things uh, video and film? And what are you looking forward to creating as we end 2022 and as we go into 2023? Um, it's been a busy time for me. Uh, there's been a lot of film projects this past year uh, with various projects in the narrative space and the commercial space, music videos and promotional videos. Uh, recently, we finished off a short film uh, shoot in Hamilton of a second unit of this amazing little post-apocalyptic horror short called Shelter. And uh, we had a blast shooting this in downtown Hamilton. And we had a crew of about roughly eight to ten people. And this was the, uh, the written composition work from director Lawrence Roberts, who is also our director on Fool's Game which is also being edited right now. And uh, we had a great shoot uh, in Hamilton, creating this kind of, I don't know, post-apocalyptically two characters trying to find shelter. Uh, and it's, it's a really engaging little story. So uh, Lawrence Roberts found this uh, location in downtown Hamilton, which is often shot with uh, various, you know, horror films, horror genre style of productions. And on Friday, we shot the, the last units and had a, had a great shoot. I mean, the space was perfect. It had that kind of creepy vibe to it. It had a very like rough industrial look, but it maintained kind of a timeless quality. And especially in film, that's really powerful to create stories that you can utilize spaces in downtown environments. So I'm super excited to share with you guys what we've created when it's obviously edited. But in the post flow, I'm going to make some, some videos on how we set up and how we shot and how we created this amazing little uh, short film. And shout out to the actors. Uh, we had Samir and Madison who were just incredible at being able to capture the, the essence of a script, but also the, the idea of this post-apocalyptic genre, which was just created for this film. And it's engaging. It's it's really fun to be a part of the process of filming, but also to see how it was made. So I could go on forever talking about that. And obviously that's for a separate video. But uh, but in this case, I just want to give you guys a heads up. Um, yeah, Scott says, starting a YouTube live channel about treasure hunting. Uh, we're going to do a lot of live filming. That's awesome, Scott. So question for you, what is your platform or what is the camera that you're looking to use for that uh, live streaming of this treasure hunting?
And there's a bunch of awesome treasure hunters that I follow on uh, TikTok. There's a guy down in the States who's got an abandoned mine, I believe. Um, and he's he's doing videos finding all sorts of things in this mine shaft. And it's really cool to see, you know, his journey into this property that he purchased, but also the idea of what he's finding down there, like old turn of the 20th century uh, mining materials, jeans, which are obviously this treasure hunter's uh, thing he's looking to find. So that's pretty epic when he has a chance to go down there and bring his camera with him. So we're growing now right now at four people. Whew. This is flying off the hook. Let's see if we can get to 10. <laughs> then I can start giving things away. <laughs> GoPro for now and my DJI FPV drone. Very cool. Um, so GoPro, two questions for you. Which GoPro do you have, Scott? And uh, which uh, DJI FPV drone do you have? Because I've been seeing some things online with DJI products with the Avada and how it's been giving some people some issues with uh, connectivity and performance. So. Haven't done FPV myself. I'd like to give it a shot, but I'm a little old school. I like the uh, the Mavic 3 and the Inspire 2. It's more of a controlled style of shooting, but I love the the video that comes out of uh, FPV. Marty, Marty is nuts. Is saying 5,000. Congrats, thank you, Marty. Yeah, it's uh, it was an epic journey to get to 5,000. It's 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 a bit of a slog. It's tough to get up there. Um, anybody who's starting out a YouTube channel, um, it's it's not easy right now. Obviously, there's so many different channels that are out there. But a little secret sauce that I found from making YouTube videos uh, over the now, I guess, a couple of years that I've been doing this for, uh, definitely consistency is key. So making sure you have a video every week uh, and engaging content within that video and utilize what makes you passionate about what you're trying to make your channel about, but also incorporate other people into your channel who might have channels of their own because that's kind of the bump up I find when it comes to getting channels off the ground. Uh, it's something that people nowadays, the algorithm is trying to promote so many different uh, content that you have in your channel. If you can cross mix people who also have YouTube channels, you will grow as a community. And that I think right now is a big thing with YouTube. So Marty writes back, I have a DG, DJI Mini 3. Uh, he loves the little drone. Yeah, that's an awesome drone. Uh, the Mini 3, when you can be able to turn that gimbal vertically, that's a game changer. Like you can shoot specifically for reels. Don't need to worry about open gate filming. You can just have that gimbal centered up vertically to get whatever you want. So that's that's wild. I, I love the uh, the ability of being able to bring new content and create that kind of thing. Pim55, welcome. I would love a DJI, but I'm wanting to start and on a budget. Yes, absolutely. Drones are expensive and anything film is expensive. Um, I recommend taking a look at anything maybe on eBay or on like Facebook marketplace or whatever you have for buy and sell in your area, look for used products to see if you can get into droning off the bat because you'll save money. Number one, obviously these are drones that have been used before, but you don't have that worry of flying a brand new product if you're not used to being able to utilize those drones. So something that's already been flown, you're saving some cash. So if you do crash, you're not going to crash a new product. So, and also on that topic, DJI does have that refresh option where you can purchase like an extended warranty on your drones. Um, it's a really good thing to have, I think, when it comes to drone use, especially if you're looking to uh, to insure your drone. But that being said, if it's not in your budget, you know, save some money and buy used. Scott writes back, FPV drone from DJI Films and 4K is really nice flying with the goggles. Uh, you really get full vision of what you're filming. Yeah, that's awesome. Like if the goggles are really cool at being able to create that new, I don't know, first person preview mode. Like I, I'm too I'm too afraid to try flying FPV down canyons and, and you know, narrow spaces and seeing these videos, they're just basically flying by tree branches. Cause I mean, hands up, I've I've crashed a Mavic 2 into a tree. It was a glorious thing. So the idea of flying by at double the speed uh, without really obstacle avoidance is something that I'm not too familiar with. But, you know, if someone wants to give me an FPV drone out there so I can test it out and uh, no strings attached, I'm definitely game. But uh, on that note, yeah, anything you can try and save money on is so important nowadays, especially when you're doing uh, filmmaking. It's often great just to start and create utilizing you know, good quality used products, but take a look online on forums, on Facebook, and, and even on YouTube. 
Check out uh, things on Instagram as well. There's all the kinds of places that you can look at for used products and to get your feet wet without blasting the budget on something that's brand new. Um, that is a big thing that I'm guilty of. I always like to go for the latest and greatest, but you know we're in a recession now and, and you got to save money. So when it comes to looking at film gear, see if you can make that ability of utilizing a product that's in good condition for a good price, you know, Go and meet the seller if you can. Talk about the product, tackle some price, and see if that might work for your kit. But uh, definitely, I think it's something that nowadays there's just so much out there, and I'm seeing prices like fluctuate all over the place for for drones, especially. Thoughts on free video editing software versus paid? Okay, good, great. That's a great question, Tim. And uh, Ian, <laughs> welcome, brother. Hey, how do I win? Well, you you guys are all being entered in as you type, so just type away. Michael Maury's here in the room. Oh my God. Keep coming in, friends. Keep coming in. Um, everyone who's entering in gets automatically added. My computer just picking out names. So we'll we'll do a draw when I get to. I'd like to get at least 10 people here to make me feel like I drove to the studio for purpose. So let's keep going. Let's get these people in the studio. Um, but uh, back to that first question: editing software versus paid uh, and uh, free. So there is some really great software titles out there. Um, obviously, I work in Premiere Pro, which is not often that great. But uh, if you're looking to start out, I would say go DaVinci. DaVinci uh, Resolve is a fantastic program. And it's actually something I might move to full time coming up because I'm sick of the bugs in Premiere. Uh, but DaVinci gives you a free trial version of a software. You can also unlock it for, I believe, it's like 350 or 300 bucks when you've gotten used to the software title. And, you know, you don't have to pay a monthly fee because Adobe Creative Cloud is evil and it makes you pay that monthly fee forever. And they often don't work with the Mac Pro chips. And we're all, you know, if you're familiar with the Mac M1 and the M2 chips, some of these software titles in, in Adobe don't necessarily work well with the Mac M1 chips. They are, they're, I guess, what, optimized now to work, so they say, but first person use as well as seeing many friends online, uh, everyone complains about them. So check out DaVinci Resolve. I definitely recommend that. Uh, Yuxun, Facebook Marketplace has been a great place to find secondhand cameras for me. Absolutely. Take a look at Facebook Marketplace right now because prices there are a bit better than eBay. Um, I've seen like Lumix G85 cameras because I'm a huge Lumix fan. I've seen Lumix cameras for prices ranging from like 300 bucks to 800 bucks and sometimes $400. So take a look online for Sony, Lumix, Canon, uh, even Fuji, all these cameras out there, people are looking to potentially, you know, bump up to the next thing and they might be trying to find a place to sell. So definitely check out Facebook Marketplace. You're not paying for maybe shipping if you can meet the person in person, you know, save some cash. So uh, Lee Anthony, congrats on 5,000. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, it's, it is, a, it's, it's been a journey. Janica was on the channel before, as we all know, and he'll come back again, hopefully soon. But uh, yeah, 140 videos roughly to get to 5,000. Algorithms make no sense. <laughs> Anybody out there who's used YouTube or has a YouTube channel, uh, some videos just tend to take off sometimes three to four months after you post. I have a couple of videos on the channel right now which are gaining momentum now when they were posted almost eight months ago. So how that works, I have no idea, but uh, it's all kind of a, a, a hit or miss kind of thing. Ian Hammond's writing, does anyone else want the Bombers to win? Yes, today is Grey Cup. And as you can tell, I'm probably not really a football fan. So don't all go running out chat doors right now. I'm more of a baseball fan because I play baseball. But uh, yeah, yeah, Ian says boo. I agree. But uh, you know, Winnipeg, yeah, money's on Winnipeg, I guess, to, to take it home. But it's in Saskatchewan. It seems so weird that the CFL is in a... I don't know, a, a different city for the cup. I've, always, I've never been used to that. That kind of like forces the home team of the Great Cup to play better that year just so they can get in. But uh, but anyways, I digress. Um, we should start giving some stuff away because I'm 14 minutes in the chat. We got seven people hoping for 10. Come on, three more. But uh, why don't we give something away? So the first up to bat, I was sent this by San Mark. Now, San Mark is a, a fantastic third-party company for creating all things ND filters and phone cases and essentially everything that allows your phone to act as more of a video camera. And I was sent these ND filters, the 
polarized neutral density filters for the iPhone. And this works for, I think, the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13, 14, 11, all that sort of stuff. Um, and if you're looking to do uh, filmmaking, this can control your shutter and allows you to really, you know, set those manual settings in your phone to optimize, you know, slow motion shooting in, in the higher frame rates or even, you know, more true motion that we see with the eye at 23.976 or 24 frames a second. These ND filters can really help on a bright sunny day, sometimes in a brighter environment, or if you're looking to go in a darker environment, these are fantastic. So they come in this nice little bougie kit and you also get a fun little clippy that gives you the ability of clipping them to your phone. And the quality of them, they're, they're really good. They, they screw on to the bottom of the clip and then you attach it to your phone. And these little guys are, uh, you know, they're well-made. The quality of glass for the ND filter is fantastic. So definitely worth checking these things out online if you're looking to do more of, uh, you know, video making on your phone. Because let's be honest, you know, phones can roughly shoot in ProRes, which, you know, that's pretty impressive, uh, especially when you're looking to capture video. So, yeah, let's give away one of these, number one and see who is looking to uh, take home the Sandmark ND filter set. Roughly retail price, you know, I guess price is right, so you're looking at about 100 bucks, 120 bucks. But uh, yeah, let's take a look and see who wins. All right, drum roll please, I have the app open. And the winner is, yeah, make sure you also subscribe. If you're, if you're here just for fun in the chat, you got to subscribe. So if you're not part of the channel, I will check. But uh, yeah, no strings attached. It's all free. I'll DM you afterwards and uh, we'll send off, well, I'll send off the products to you and uh, get them in the mail. Okay, so picking. And the winner is, it's Ian Hammond. Hey, congrats, Ian. <laughs> I mean, the odds of winning are pretty high when there's only seven people here. But uh, yeah, congrats. You are the proud owner of the brand new, or well, not brand new, but it is the Sandmark hybrid filter set. So my friend, pop your your uh, pop your address into my chat or just come to Toronto, we'll get a beer, but uh, these are yours. So happy film filmmaking, because now you can shoot and do controlled uh, footage on your phone in any condition outside. All right, that's one. So now we got more things. And actually before I hop to the next thing, this is the most ridiculous thing I've been sent. So when you get to certain levels of subscribers, you get sent weird crap to review. And I was sent this thing called the selfie spin. Now I'm not going to give this away because I don't endorse it because it's going to break whatever product you attach to it. But the, the point of this dumb piece of product is to essentially attach and it comes with lovely packaging that looks like it was like Christmas in 1972. Uh, it has, <laughs> this is dumb. You basically attach your device to the end of this thing and then you whip it around. No kidding. Like you whip this thing around with the string attached to it to get that 360 spin. Like I can't think of worse liability to breaking something. So Anyways, I'm not going to give this away. It's just going to find the garbage. But yeah, it's essentially, this is what it is. It's called the Selfie Spin 360. So don't buy this. It's not It's not recommended by me because I tried it on, a, on an old Osmo Action and it came flying across the room and broke. So bad idea. But I mean, the box, I guess, is kind of nice. Anyways, next thing. So we got uh, Marty is nuts still saying, Tio, the big smoke, eh? Cheers from Halifax. Well, Greetings from Toronto. I hope all is well out east. And uh, I saw Buffalo getting hit by snow. So hopefully uh, Maritimes are being saved a little bit. But yeah. Uh, Lee Anthony is giving me lots of happy faces. I like that. So number two. This is the Vocal X V2 wireless microphone system of 2.4 gigahertz dual channel. So this is something that's really cool if you're looking to do any kind of you know filmmaking where you want to be able to have the receiver on your camera and then you can clip a wireless lav to your lapel so super handy no wires it's just direct to wireless and it's all battery operated and i think these are also these are rechargeable i think too and it also includes two labs so that's even better you get the kit plus the lab so not bad and this one i believe retails for approximately 125 dollars 
don't don't quote me on it. But uh, yeah, the CK Mova is a great brand. Uh, they they have a whole bunch of different type of wireless mics on the market. And uh, these ones are sent to me to review. I didn't get a chance to review these because I didn't have time, unfortunately, when they came in. But uh, it is now my turn to give them to you. So a quick spec rundown. Uh, latency is less than five milliseconds. So that's 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 pretty good. Uh, max distance per setup is nine. So you can have nine of these puppies can uh, link together. Audio input, 3.5 millimeter. Uh, you're looking at a digital 2.4 transmission type. And uh, the operational range they say is about 100 meters. That's 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 pretty good. So if you're outdoors and you don't want to run back and forth to your camera, sync up sound. This this can get the job done pretty well. And it had, the quality of this is pretty good. I tried it out very quickly in studio with Eric, uh, and was very impressed. So uh, the build quality is a little bit plasticky. Just FYI, heads up. But it's free. So here you go. Let's do the next draw and see who picks it up. We've got seven people. <laughs> There's like seven things to give away. So everyone's going to get something today as long as you stay in the chat. Uh, okay, who's next here? All right, and drum roll. Winner is Lee Anthony. Congratulations, Lee. You are now the proud owner of the CK Mova. 2.4 gigahertz dual channel wireless microphone system. So that's that's pretty awesome. I'm also just going to make note of who is winning what. So I send out the right things to the right people. So Ian, you take home the NDs. And make sure you uh, you t uh, give me a uh, direct message also in the chat and leave me maybe also your email address in, maybe not the chat, but give me a DM. Lee Anthony, congrats, Lee. And you take home a CK Movas. It's always so weird doing live streams. Like there's no one else talking to you. It's just me. But but hey. All right. So Lee Anthony, take home CK Mova. So let's go back here. So now we've got uh, who what else is in the chat? Ask me questions, by the way. Toss them out there. Anything film related, I'm happy to help. Lee says, I'm really curious about what kind of footage would come from whipping a camera around. Yeah. They sent me the video shot at the at some cliff and I think it was like off the coast of Ireland or something or near the UK. So it looked epic. And I thought it was some sort of like wand that was attached to maybe like a gimbal that created something or the or maybe it rotated it like a, like a rotational gimbal on an edge. But when they sent this to me and it's just basically string and plastic, I mean, that's, you know, that's really great. There, there is something just next level about that so yeah i would never give that away or endorse anybody attaching their precious you know electronics to something that's just going to fall apart um okay anybody else asking questions here uh at least that he's going to find out yes you will and uh ian you're on the way for that beer right now that sounds great so come into town buddy and just give me a message and we'll, and we'll meet up as you and congratulations absolutely huge congrats and congrats to lee i mean thank you for joining me here on gray cup sunday as I had no idea it was, you know, going to coincide with this because I'm not a football fan. I'm being honest. If it were the Blue Jays, you wouldn't have seen me for a week. I would have been prepping myself to celebrate. But, you know, with our, our Canadian pastime of football, I, I lack that. So my, my apologies. Uh, Lee says, very interesting. I have an old GoPro that I'll take for a spin. Well, hey, you know, Lee, if you want it, I can pack it and send it off to you. You know, maybe you could do a video and just tag me in it. It's not my endorsed product, but it's just going to find the garbage otherwise. So you know what? I'll send it along with the CK MOBAs. They're yours. Okay. So what else we got here? We've got uh, one, two, three. We've got three more things. And there's eight people. So the odds are going down, folks. It's not one-to-one -one anymore. You know, we don't have that many people now in there. Okay. So next up, let us talk about, let's see here. We've got a light. Another one. Let's, let's go with the light. Lighting. As you can tell, I'm in a studio here that we shoot in in Liberty Village. This is where both Eric and I, we share a space at the Toronto Carpet Factory. This is our, our home away from home. But the most important thing to doing anything here is lighting. And it's something that I'm still learning. It's something you never really stop learning, actually. And lighting creates mood. It creates, you can make a $10, no, there's no cameras that cost 10 bucks, but you can make a cheap camera 
look like a very expensive camera with very good lighting, or even with just lighting some point, because lighting is crucial to establishing everything. It's, it sets up your key, it sets up your fill. These are all terms, by the way, when it comes to creating that setup of what light is what. Uh, it's important to make sure you invest in lighting. It's important that you have a, a good a good key light or a good softbox light or just something that gets the job done to create something that's not flat. As you probably can't tell, but up there I've got my Ameren 200D that's just casting 8% natural light down to my face to create a bit of contour because it's just boring having a straight light at your face because that's not engaging. There's nothing about that that makes you want to to really watch the, the subject, unless it's particularly shot in that way. It's better to create some moods, some angles, some dimensions to your light. Behind me, I have two RGBs, which are just like this, different manufacturer, but they're behind me to spill up some blue light. And actually there's some orange back there, which is not properly placed because I threw it out there as I came late, but it kicks up some ambience. It, throws some hue, as you can tell up there on that uh, pipe, as well as on the wall. Um, you can set them up to create a scene. Some of you can set them up to create like effects because lights are, are, are really versatile, what they can do now. The uh, the aperture lights that I have there, they can connect to your phone, you know, and you can do all sorts of things like uh, a scene with a police officer. They may have a setting that you can have like a red or blue light switch back and forth. Uh, they can have a strobe effect to create kind of a lightning effect or a storm outside. There's so many things you can do with lights. So I highly recommend if you're looking to get into film or YouTube or whatever you're looking to create, get lights, invest in lights because they really make a huge difference. Um, it's also World Cup. Yes, Mike, that's true. It's also World Cup. I'm, I'm just picking the best day <laughs> to do a live stream. World Cup and Grey Cup, you know? Yeah, why, why tune into that when you can tune into me? Uh, I don't know. But uh, go Canada, and that's fantastic. I can't wait to see what happens to the World Cup because that I will follow. But back to the moment at hand, let's talk about lights. So this is the Pocket Elite that I was sent, uh, the F7 Mini. It's an RGB LED light. And these essentially are little lights. This is my bad unboxing here. That you can set all sorts of different things to create different light effects. They have a different color spectrum and hue. Uh, in this case, they have different also uh, bicolor ability. You can go get different color temperatures, intensities, all that sort of stuff. Um, and this is something that I use regularly. And these are the lights are bright. Uh, this is only, I believe, a 10 watt light. So it's not obviously a room filled light, but it does accentuate certain things to give you a bit of key, a soft, a rim light, a glow light. All that sort of ability, you can place it with its little uh, quarter inch thread at the bottom on a stand. Uh, you can pop it behind something to kind of capture some ambiance or some glowing effect, a halo rim light, that kind of thing. These are really versatile. And I've been on many sets where they've been placed around different areas to capture mood. And you can change the colors on these by adjusting it on the light itself. So highly recommend them. Uh, this one is similar to the lights I had back there. And I believe it's also controlled via an app, which you can download off of whatever your native camera is. So they're great. And I use them all the time whenever I do any sort of filmmaking or if I do any kind of YouTubing, uh, I have them in the background just to kick up some color. Uh, and they usually last for a good two or three hours. Turn your intensity down a bit so you don't have too high of, a, of an intensity on the light, uh, just because you can burn through your battery faster. But this is something that I really recommend. Uh, and you can get this, I think, for about 100 bucks, maybe 75. They're all different. It's, uh, it's, it's basically modeled after the RGB lights, the aperture uh, light system. And it comes with a cute little carrying case. Uh, so definitely worth it if you're looking to have some kind of unique character to your filmmaking. So we got nine people in the chat. Uh, two people have already won, so that means seven people right now. Uh, and you gotta type something because I see about five people typing regularly. So please, everybody drop your name in the chat. So in case you're watching, I can give this to you because it's going out there to the world. So let's put some more names in here and uh, also see where people are from. I'm gonna ask a question to a direct question to, uh, I believe it's Zyun. Uh, y A X U N. Uh, June, where, whereabouts are you based? 
then also, yeah, Marty, where's Marty coming from? Marty, Lee's in, Marty's in Halifax, yes. And Lee, where are you based, my friend? Ian, you're not in Miami, I don't believe you. So you and from the Philippines, phenomenal. We had uh, Kevin Kaw from the, I believe it was, I think it was the Philippines. He won um, an Osmo action from us when we hit our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So yeah, shout out to creators down in the Philippines. Pim Phoenix, love Phoenix. Colorado Nicholas, welcome Nicholas. Lee's from Pennsylvania, but born in North Dakota. I have not been to both, but I want to go. And uh, we have D Heritier 5 is from Oregon. Now, I love Oregon. Props to Oregon. I'm from the West Coast. I'm from Vancouver originally. Now I live in Toronto. But uh, yeah, West Coast is the best coast. And I love Oregon. Okay, so let's just do this. So now we have some names. And I can put <laughs> some more names besides uh, Ian's and Lee's here. And let's do a pickster for this. Okay. <clears throat> we have 10 people in the chat. And Scott's from Pennsylvania. Fantastic. Okay. Here we go. And the winner is... It's Scott. Congratulations, Scott. You are the winner of the Mini or the F7 Mini Aperture Pocket Light. Yeah. Congrats, Scott. This is a great little, uh, great little light, and I think this will really help any kind of ambiance you're trying to create on your next shoot. So... As I said earlier, uh, make sure you message me your address or DM me so I can send these out uh, to the right addresses and uh, we'll make sure we get this off into the mail. Okay, there are two more uh, lovely giveaways to give away. And uh, before I do that, I'd like to open it up to questions. So please, friends in the States or in the Philippines, what are your questions and how can I help? <clears throat> <clears throat> and, and also, <clears throat> pardon me, traveling in the States too, uh, oh, what has been your favorite project? That is a great question. So I've worked on a bunch of different shoots uh, from music videos, to films, to commercial videography. Probably my favorite project that I've been on, I'd have to say was, hmm, I'd have to say it was the Governor General's Performing Arts Awards that we shot in 2021 for CBC with Verite Films. Uh, we had a team of well, upwards of about 20 people that captured different laureate winners from the Governor General's Awards across Canada. And uh, the coolest part of that was we shot um, an uh, actor from, an actor probably from Schitt's Creek, Noah Reed. We shot a music video with him in downtown Toronto. And he did a tribute, uh, The Shape of You, by uh, uh, Joni Mitchell's original cover. And we recorded this on the hottest day of the year in 2021 during the pandemic and lockdowns and all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing shoot. We shot that with an uh, Inspire 2 drone. We had two cameras on it, two cinema cameras. <clears throat> Pardon me, the C70 and the, uh, the Z cam. And uh, yeah, we had a team of about 20 people and Noah, and he crushed it wearing different rig wigs. Pardon me. <clears throat> Pardon me. That uh, Catherine O'Hara wore, as my voice is dying here. <clears throat> that uh, Catherine O'Hara wore in Schitt's Creek. And so he did this tribute piece to her from the song. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. We we shot this all on the waterfront in Toronto and uh, it was directed by Joel Ivany and produced by Verite Films. Noah was our starring role and uh, we had a great time. And it's on YouTube now with like half a million views almost. So very cool to see how much that project has, has I, reached out across Canada and across the world. <clears throat> and uh, Pim says, how annoying is it to try and figure out where you can fly due to regulations? Yeah, that's that's an interesting question and a whole topic to talk about. Um, it's always good to know where you're going to fly and check the regulations uh, in your area and restrictions. Uh, that is something that, you know, pre-plan your flight before you toss your bird up in the air. Uh, check out uh, the app at home, uh, on the DJI app if you're flying a DJI product. 
and check out the bubbles, as I like to call them, the, the, the restriction zones. Orange is kind of your friend. Blue is just not reliable, and gray is a no-no. So check out all these things, but make sure you also have your proper uh, classification to fly. In Canada, we have a basic and advanced certificate. Uh, so you have to make sure you have the proper certification in order to take off. Otherwise, you won't be able to fly potentially in the area. And, and just be aware, uh, you know, of the surroundings and never fly out of line of sight. Regardless if you're flying in the mountains, never fly out of line of sight. You can fly into wildlife. You could fly into a passing plane, someone flying a kite, all these other things that you don't think about besides aircraft. You know, it's something that, you know, that's why FPV, I'm a little bit hesitant to get into that style of flying because it's just so fast, but um, it's tough. And, and you have to make sure that, you know, people in the area, you know, properties and private property, all this stuff goes into tandem. So make sure you, you check that out before you, you toss it up. Uh, Lee says, that's awesome. Yes. Nicholas asked this nice. Sounds like it was fun. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a very cool shoot. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Look up Noah Reed. Uh, I, I think it's shape of you. Uh, and uh, you'll, Catherine O'Hara, look up Governor Generals. It's one of the first things that pops up, and we had a blast filming that. What is the most important piece of equipment for someone starting out? Uh, okay, Oof, that's a good question. Uh, the most important piece of equipment would probably have to be, well, it's the camera body. You have to make sure you get used to your camera and you know your camera inside out before you start shooting anything. Um, professionally, obviously, but if you're looking to be a hobbyist getting involved in it, Find a good camera and a good kit lens. Is it you know a full frame? Is it a Sony camera with a particular mount, Sony E-mount? Is it a Canon mount, EF or RF? Is it Micro Four Thirds? Is it a Nikon mount? You know, learn your camera system before you definitely start. That's a big one. So having that ability to know the camera, know what lenses work with it, if they're native lenses. <clears throat> Pardon me. If they're native lenses or if they are a third-party proprietary lens like Sigma or Tokina or other lenses that are on the market that work with that camera body. So take a look and to know what products are available. Also, if you want to rig out your camera, like cages, you know, so you can attach things to it, that's a huge thing. But knowing your camera, knowing the weight, the battery life, uh, the performance, what shoots the best for color settings and modes and all that sort of thing are key in order to make sure you save time because time is, you know, as they say, daylight burns. So knowing how much time you have to work with is key. <clears throat> Marty is not says, how do you like living in Toronto? It was busy for me living in New North York for about 10 years, 35 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's a great city. Um, I've been here now since 2007. Uh, and probably you guys may not know, but I sing opera. I sing with the Canadian opera company here in Toronto. And so my background's in music. So I moved out here to sing. Uh, it's a great place for the arts. It's a great place for music, for film. Um, it's, it's cold right now, hence the reason why I'm clearing my throat, but, uh, it's an awesome city for, uh, being able to, uh, meet and connect. I think with a lot of creatives, both in the arts, singing or music or dance or whatever you do, but, uh, in film, especially so much is going on and so many YouTubers are from here, like, and content creators and, and media firms. There's so many people based in Toronto. So it's, it's a great place to be to, with a great community behind it. Uh, what do we have? Nicholas says, thank you. Scott says, you have to have a good spotter per FPV. So back on the FPV, absolutely. People who do it themselves, I mean, I just don't know. I think uh, Mr. Mori here and I should uh, get an FPV kit and go for a flight for uh, for Tapestry. If you don't know, Michael's also the director of Tapestry Opera, fantastic director here in the city. But uh, I've seen some really cool things with uh, arts companies during the pandemic and even baseball teams and all that kind of stuff, flying FPV drones into theaters and to stadiums and all, and even bowling alleys. There's one famous video of that guy who flew in. Still don't know how he did it all in one cut. Maybe it's like a 1917 thing where they had, uh, you know, the mock style of a single take where they kind of handed the camera off and did a very quick cut and then reset the scene and continued. But uh, FPV drones, I'm, I'm getting the, the vibe today from the room that FPV is definitely something people are curious about. So I will check into that. Let's chat over Pivo. Amen. Next thing to give away. More sound. <laughs> it's not an FPV drone. I wish it was. Maybe when I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll give away an FPV drone if I don't crash it. But uh, this is a nice set of mics. 
So this is the Movo WMX20 Duos, the UHF dual channel wireless microphone system. So this is essentially like the CK Mova, just with longer range. Uh, this one has, I believe, a 5.6. Just let me verify this. Yeah, so this is a 5.6 transmission range, so it's a higher frequency. Comes with more adapters, comes with XLR cables, windscreens for your little muff on the, uh, the lav mics. Uh, it has a stronger pickup, longer wireless extension range, and a better, you know, more well-built product probably because it's a bit more durable. Belt clips, um, and they just, it's a good quality sound. We tried it in studio, and uh, I didn't review it like I should have, but uh, to give a quick review here, the sound quality indoors is very good. Outdoors, uh, make sure you have the wind muff on, as with any lav mic. But uh, yeah, these are these are pretty good. So highly recommend them. Uh, they're a great price too. I believe the set retails for around about 150, I think. Um, so go take a look online and see if they do. But uh, let's see who can take these home. And uh, these are definitely a set worth using. So I'm gonna some names in here and let's see who takes home. I'll pop it here into the thing. And 10K, let's go 10K. I agree, Pim. Like my goal, actually here, let's do a little like fireside chat. My goal is to get you 100K. Um, you know, this is not my full-time job doing YouTube. So it's hard to do this uh, weekly, but I would love to be able to post one video a week for the year and uh, hopefully hit 10, 100K. Because 100K, you get that funky play button. And that's kind of my goal. I don't want a million subscribers. I just want that silver or copper plaque or whatever it is. So that would be really cool because uh, YouTube definitely is a journey. So let's get to 100. Yes, and Shiba Inu to the moon. I agree. Why not? Shiba Inu and, and Stephen Bell to 100K. So back on the topic at hand, let's give away some mics. So here we go. Got some names that are in. And drummer, please. And the winner is Nicholas Estes. Nicholas, congratulations. You are the proud new owner of the CK, no, not CK, but the Movos dual wireless kit. So congratulations, Nicholas. Just write this down, because I'm gonna forget everybody here. <laughs> this is the Movo one by Nicholas. It's a great kit, Nicholas, you're gonna love it. I love this little set. I use the Tascams myself. I might move over to DJI uh, in the new year, but uh, definitely this is something that uh, will help your filmmaking process. Even if you're doing any kind of promotional stuff, uh, I think this will really help. So check that out. And of course, Scott won the F7 Mini, which I didn't write down. F7 Mini, cool. We are coming to our last, our last gift, last gift giveaway. And it's almost Christmas, so this is kind of appropriate. Uh, let's pop back to chat here. Marty is nuts is saying, would love to see SHIB go to the moon. I'd be rich. I think even I have a bit of SHIB, so that would be lovely. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens after all this FTX scandal. Anybody who owns crypto out there, be careful investing in this market. Janik and I did well at the beginning of it, but uh, we haven't held many positions since then. So it's, uh, it's something that was maybe, maybe a bubble, but we'll see if it comes back. So questions, aside from uh, filming my favorite projects and FPV, what's one more question that I can answer if it's sound, film, editing, pop it in the chat. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to talk about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's something I think that, you know, as we, said, as we said before, like getting a good camera body, but not too expensive. And you can find great cameras out there, like even the early Sony models, which I'm not a fan of Sony, but Sony makes great cameras to you know get used to, to get a good image of, um, because then you get used to a system, you know, and you kind of move along in a certain ecosystem. Um, being a profusion this past, uh, about a week ago, Vistech presents like, I don't know, it's like Fan Expo for cameras. Uh, and so Eric and I went to uh, Profusion, we had a blast. Uh, and it's, you know, all the vendors come together to talk about all things cameras and all things, uh, you know, up and coming tech or lenses or even people describing their shooting styles or photography tips or video tips, lighting tips, all that kind of stuff. If you're in Toronto in November, go to Profusion because it's free. It doesn't even cost money to get in. 
course, you're going to spend money when you're there because it's geared towards selling things. But to make connections and to see people uh, talk about their experiences in film or in video or in photography, it's it's huge. It's something that really allows, I don't know, that extra level of uh, you know creating dynamic filmmaking. So check out Profusion in November if you're in TO next year. Um, Pim, thought on a good but cheap drone. Uh, a good but cheap drone, I would go for the minis, the DJI minis. Um, even the Mini 2 or Mini 1, they're good little drones. They're tiny. They're below that 250 gram weight class that, you know, that ensures you have to have certification, which to be honest, I'd say get certification anyways. You know, it's good to have it. You know, people say you don't need it, but you do learn some valuable tips in that, let's be honest, pilot training course that you have to do. But uh, you do learn a lot of things for safety standards in Canada. Uh, and it does look good to have at least a basic certificate behind your name. Um, because if you are flying somewhere that someone does question what you're doing, you have the ability of being able to have that. Um, but a good cheap drone, Mini 1, Mini 2. Uh, Mini 3 is a bit expensive. Prices are hopping up. But people might be selling their Mini 2s to get to the Mini 3. So the Mini SE still shots a great, yeah, Mini SE is a great little one too. All these little mini drones are the best to get into. And if you are lucky to find a Mavic 2 Pro that's on sale, I've seen prices crashing in those things for like 500 bucks. And if you can get your hands on one of those, they are great. Because not only do you learn a heavier drone, but you also get a very good image quality to start with. Um, the Mavic 2 was a workhorse for me. Uh, I loved it. Uh, an upgrade to Mavic 3 about a year ago. So it's not a year ago. I guess earlier this year. But uh, they shoot in 4K. They have fantastic video qualities at night. They shoot great photos, um, especially photos. The Mavic 2 Pro is really good at photos, um, even sometimes better than the Mavic 3. But I don't know. That's just me. Um, Marty says, I'm selling my Mini to see now if I can get a Mini 3. Yeah. So sell the Mini SE. Just sell your gear and move up. I do it all the time. And that's how you save money. Sell your gear and move up. All right. Any questions? So before I hop to the last question here, uh, our last giveaway. Are there any micro four thirds lens users out there? Because this kind of pertains to you. I mean, you can use this lens if you don't have it. Maybe it forces you into that ecosystem. But is there anybody out there who is a micro four thirds shooter? Raise your hand or drop something in the chat. Uh, no one seems to be raising their hand. Maybe we do not have <laughs> a micro forester shooter. That, that's fine. You don't have to be a micro forester user. It's, it's something that micro four thirds are usually, they're a smaller sensor. Uh, and they, the ability of it being a smaller sensor means the camera body can be smaller. You can get a black magic camera. You can get certain Z cams. There's uh, the Lumix series had micro four thirds in it, like the GH5 and, Oh, the G85 and the G7. Um, but yeah, no, micro four thirds um, sensors are great. And why I say all that is because the last product is a lens. And I'm giving away uh, the uh, TT Artisan 7.5 millimeter fisheye lens. Now, this is a really cool lens that I was sent. It's also kind of a milestone for me as it was the first lens that I was sent to review. Uh, and it's something that uh, I think would really be... A nice little bonus for someone if they have a micro four thirds kit. So this is a clickable aperture lens, which I kind of like. People say they don't like clickable aperture lens. That basically means the, the f-stop range. And I like, I like the feel of it. It's kind of fun when I use this lens. Um, and it's built well, and it has an all-metal design. And it's a very unique lens in that you can utilize fisheye lens to, you know, they're great for actually many purposes. You can use them in like a room shot, a very wide shot, because being a 7.5 millimeter, this is specifically for larger range shooting, or if you're going close to somebody, it's great for fisheye, so when you get that warped feel. But if you have like a realtor shoot that you're doing for like a room-based, you know, trying to capture a full room or a full space, it's like the wide lens on the iPhone. So. The wide lens on the iPhone, uh, if you pop the wide setting on, it kind of gives that, you know, dimensional look. That's the fisheye, and that's what this does. So the fisheye is a great little lens, uh, and it has a micro four thirds mount at the back. And I believe you can actually change the mount on this lens, which is kind of cool. So you can change it out for a different mount. 
And it comes also with a little ND filter. So you get a little ND, you can pop on to the back of this and it screws on to change the ND at the back of the lens. So if you're on a bright sunny day, you don't have to attach an ND filter up front because it's a little ND right on the back of that lens. So kind of cool. But uh, yes, this was the first lens I was sent to review on the channel and uh, therefore has special significance to me. So let's give away a Micro Four Thirds TT Artisans, which is also a really good brand name, I must say. They make some really good products uh, and uh, they have great customer service. So yeah, let's see who takes away the Micro Four Thirds lens. We've got six people left in the channel here. Oh, we got seven now. So uh, yeah, let's see who takes us here. And the last, but certainly not least, TD Artisans goes to, where's the app again? There it is, okay. And the winner is, Marty is awesome, or Marty is nuts, one of the two. Marty, you win yourself a lens, congratulations. <laughs> This, if you don't have a Micro Four Thirds camera, Marty, uh, I recommend taking a look and trying to get one because <laughs> it's a great lens. And uh, even like a Lumix G7, as you can get for next to nothing, GH4, GH3, uh, you can get yourself, uh, this is actually a really cool, unique lens. So congratulations, Marty. Like I said, drop your, uh, your um, address, anybody who wants today. Drop your address in an email or uh, into a chat for me, and that would be great. And uh, let's just go through our winners so I don't forget anybody here. But we have, when I did this with Janica, Janica would take track of the winners, and I would just talk, so it's easier that way. But uh, Marty takes home the TT Artisan's lens. And I think the last one we had was... Nick, was it Nicholas? Yes, Nicholas took home. No, Nicholas is the the Movo, yeah. Am I missing anybody here? Just raise your hand. We got one, two, three, four, five, five. Yes, that's right. Awesome. Everyone's accounted for. So congratulations to Ian with the ND filters. Congratulations to Lee Anthony with the CK Movo wireless mics. Uh, the Movo to Nicholas, the Movo wireless lav set. Congratulations, Nicholas. Scott taking home the F7 mini RGB light and Marty... Marty's nuts taking home the TT artisans. Uh, so that's that's awesome. And please, if I don't see your uh, email addresses or if I don't see your addresses, just get in touch with me and I'll get these off in the mail to you. Um, but yeah, before I run, any last questions besides my non-existent FPV information that I don't know? <laughs> yes, thank you, Lee. Congrats to, congrats to everybody and it's my pleasure. Uh, this has been really fun having a chance to give back multiple products. Last time I think we gave a giveaway, it was for a gimbal and it was just one product. So it's kind of fun to spread the wealth, let's just say, and, and to you know help people out who are looking to, to get different products. Um, definitely get used to your camera system, learn your camera system well, and but don't blast your budget on the best. You, know, you don't need to pick up a RED. You can find a good used Micro Four Thirds camera to utilize that you know awesome TT Artisan's lens, sound, Sound and lighting are probably two of the most key fundamentals to filmmaking because they can make or break any film, regardless of how good the image is. If your sound sucks and if your lighting doesn't look very good and your story is bad, because you gotta have story too. But if your project, let's just say it doesn't have a narrative, doesn't have good lighting and good sound, you know, no camera is gonna save you. So learn lighting and learn sound. And all the only way you can do that is to just practice. Practice setting it up, practice trying, uh, practice, you know, utilizing products if you can borrow them or rent them. Um, that's a huge bonus. And uh, I think that's a big one for being able to make sure that you get familiar with uh, with everything because you don't want to show up to shoot and, and you're fumbling with your gear or, you know, you just, you waste time because especially in the wintertime, you don't have much time if you're outdoors uh, or even on a set. Uh, time is always money. So that's my, my key. If you're flying drones, not to sound like a dad, but just do the courses online in the country that you live in. Uh, you learn valuable information and it gives you more credentials to back up the information behind you. That's a big one. It's important to make sure that you have, uh, you know, 
just knowledge of basic flight because different weather conditions can affect drones. Yes, they're not a plane, like most of these courses give you the topics and information on, but if you are ever questioned by somebody or you know authorities ask you why you're flying, if you have verification, you know they may not know that 250 grams is a weight class for a drone. So just, just do the training on it because I highly recommend that and uh, and get experience you know and practice flying safe obviously if you're flying fpv like i said earlier in the chat definitely get a spotter uh because if you're wearing goggles you know flying around at you know insane speeds you probably can't see a branch or a building or a, anything so having a spotter with you is a huge huge thing um but yeah thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers it's been amazing it's been an awesome journey and i can't wait to get to 10 10 is my goal by the end of 2023 so let's see if i can get there we're going to do uh a video a week and all things film gear reviews tech reviews if you guys ever have a specific question drop me a line on social media drop me a, a line in the community chat uh request any kind of topic i would be happy to talk about it and uh and and see if i can help you out in your filmmaking process and uh and definitely share the knowledge because we all just stumble along learning as we do film. It's, it's a never ending learning process. So anyways, hope everyone's well, uh, be well, enjoy the great cup, enjoy the world cup. You know, why would you come to watching a giveaway when you can go watch football and soccer or in England, it's the same thing because we're both football. All right, peace, be well friends. And we will talk soon at the next giveaway. Ciao.